If you're looking for proven ways to take your fundraising results to the next level, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Intentional Fundraiser Podcast, hosted by Tammy Zonker. Tammy has trained and led thousands of nonprofit organizations to collectively raise more than a half billion dollars and is also recognized as one of America's top 20 fundraising experts. This is the podcast where Tammy equips and empowers amazing fundraising pros like you to transform your fundraising so you can transform the world. And now, let's hear from Tammy. We'll start the show in just a moment after a word from our sponsor. Support for this show is brought to you by our friends at Bloomerang. Bloomerang offers donor management and online fundraising software that helps small to medium nonprofits, just like First Tee of Greater Akron, a nonprofit that empowers kids and teens through the game of golf. After just one year with Bloomerang, First Tee of Greater Akron doubled their unique donors, improved donor stewardship, and raised more funds. Keep listening to hear how they did it or visit bloomerang.com forward slash intentional to learn more. Again, that's bloomerang.com forward slash intentional. to talk about recurring giving communities today. I've been busy creating a free one-hour training on creating the ultimate annual fundraising plan to raise more money and a six-week masterclass on the same subject. If you're interested in learning more about either of them, check out the show notes. But developing this curriculum has convinced me more than ever that giving communities are the single most important strategy for growing and sustaining donor loyalty, donor lifetime value, and ultimately, major and legacy gifts when done well. So today on the Intentional Fundraiser podcast, I'm going to talk that out. First, a level set. What is a recurring giving community and what is it not? So a recurring giving community is a group of individuals, typically, who independently commit to contributing a specific dollar amount to a nonprofit organization automatically on a weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annual basis. This contribution can be facilitated with a debit or credit card or maybe an automatic electronic funds transfer from a bank account. Two attributes distinguish a recurring giving commitment. One, an automatic transfer of a specific amount on a specific schedule. And two, is it's pledged indefinitely right? There's no end date. This contribution will continue until the donor requests a cancellation or a pause. So for clarity, let's talk about what's not a recurring giving community gift. I get this question a lot. So let's talk through a few of the scenarios. Number one, you might have a multi-year giving circle whereby donors pledge a specific dollar amount for a specific number of years. For example, maybe they pledge $1,000 a year, each year for five years. This is a giving community, but the pledge has an end date. And those pledges aren't necessarily set up on an automatic payment schedule. They might be, but they don't have to be. Are they a recurring giving community? No, they are not. They're great. We love them. They are a giving community but they don't meet the criteria for an indefinite recurring giving community. So let's talk about scenario number two, an affinity group giving. A group of individuals based on a common set of interests, identities, or experiences. For example, you may have developed a women in philanthropy community. You might have alumni giving communities or grateful patient communities. A well-known example might be the American Red Cross Tiffany Circle, and of course, the United Way's Tocqueville Society. Are they an example of a recurring giving community? No, they are not. They're great. We love them. They are a giving community. They're generous. Typically, members of these giving communities give a minimum gift of $10,000 sometimes or more, but the commitment is usually year to year. Scenario number three the last scenario, giving circles. 
this would be a group of individuals who take it upon themselves to form a voluntary group to donate their pooled money or time to an organization. The group determines how to allocate those pooled resources to charitable organizations or community projects. They might pool together money. Maybe it's $100,000, and they're going to give it to six different organizations of their choosing. It could be 100 women who give or 100 men who give. We've seen lots of those popping up in communities all across the U.S. and many in Canada. Are they an example of a recurring giving community? No, they are not. <laughs> we are the hopeful recipient of these grassroots giving groups or circles, but we don't manage them. We don't administer them. They are not ours. And they typically aren't recurring or indefinite commitment, right? They're usually episodic and year to year. All right. So now that we're clear on what we're talking about, when we say recurring giving communities, Let's look at some of the stats around recurring giving programs and why they're so important to your fundraising success. On average, 45% of U.S. donors have enrolled in some type of a monthly giving program. They may not still be enrolled, but they are familiar with the concept and they have participated. 52% of millennials are interested in monthly giving as a way to donate. Donors who are enrolled in recurring giving programs give 42% more annually than one-time givers. In fact, the average monthly recurring donation is $52 a month. And you math whizzes know that's $624 a year versus the average one-time donation, which is $128 a year. So a monthly recurring gift is almost five times larger on average. The average overall retention rate in the U.S. of donors is less than 50%. And monthly giving programs typically enjoy retention rates of over 80% after the first year and 95% after year five. Having more loyal donors directly equates to an increase in donor lifetime value. According to Dr. Adrian Sargent, of course, co-founder of the Institute for Sustainable Philanthropy, he says that just a 10% improvement in your donor retention rate can result in a 200% increase in donor lifetime value. And then, of course, monthly recurring donors are the most likely group to give legacy gifts, right? So even if they're giving modestly during their lifetime on a month-to-month -month basis through a reoccurring commitment, when they pass, they're typically giving from appreciated assets, retirement funds, homes vehicles, boat, so they have more to give. Let's also present why now is the time to invest resources in recurring giving communities. You know, whether you're starting up a monthly giving program or maybe you already have one and you want to grow it, you want to grow it significantly. If you have been following this podcast or hearing me speak at conferences in the last few months, you've heard me talk about the great new book called The Generosity Crisis. It was written by Nathan Chappelle and Brian Crimmins, and they unpack the Giving USA data and the AFP fundraising effectiveness reports to reveal an alarming decline in the number of U.S. households giving. Mostly, that decline is at the $500 gift value and below, and many of us haven't noticed it because year-over-year -year giving has continued to increase, right? Supporters in the U.S. gave more in 2022 than they did in 2021. But when you pull back the curtain on the number of donors giving, that's where the decline is happening. So donors declined by 10% in 2022. In fact, the number of U.S. households giving has declined eight quarters in a row. First-time donor retention dropped by 25.4% in 2022. So those who gave in 2021 did not give again in 2022. The overall donor retention rate is now the lowest on record at just 42.6%. That means for every donor you gain, you'll lose one and then some. The average donor age in the U.S. is 65 years old. We have a rapidly aging base of supporters and a dwindling pipeline. In fact, Nathan and Brian predict if the trend continues, U.S. household giving 
could be single digit in 40 years. While this sounds like the perfect storm of gloom and doom, they are quick to say this alarming trend can be reversed by creating radical connection with our community of current and probable donors. It seems to me that recurring giving communities done well are one important way to create that radical connection with supporters who are incredibly loyal and generous relative to their capacity. Building a reliable base for unrestricted operating funds, as well as possible major gifts and legacy gifts over time. So what do I mean when I say recurring giving communities done well? I say language matters. So let's start with the language we use to describe our recurring giving community. When we didn't know any better, we often called our giving communities societies, right? The sustainer society, the power of possibility society, maybe the giving hope society. Now, we didn't mean harm, but we're wiser now, right? As Dr. Maya Angelou famously said, when you know better, you do better. And now we recognize that the word society can infer exclusiveness over inclusiveness, status, right? Like I envision a crested blazer and an ascot. So like when I hear the word society, it's very exclusive. So better to use language like a circle, right? Our sustainer circle, our possibility community, our partners, our partners in hope, a club, allies, like allies in action, believers, champions, advocates, You'll come up with way better names than I have, but something warm, something inviting, something inclusive, something that has an attraction to a wide scope of our community, right? Where everyone sees themselves belonging or in alignment, if indeed our mission aligns with their values. So once we have a warm, inviting, inclusive name, we want to begin thinking about the donor experience. What does it mean to belong to this community? Now, there's a great study out of Yale by a professor of economics. His name is Robert Schiller. He says, quote, donors give more when they have a sense of belonging, end quote. Of course, belonging was identified by Maslow in his hierarchy of needs right after basic physical needs, right? Food, water, warmth, and rest. And then right before safety and security. So it's third third from the bottom, climbing up in that Maslow hierarchy of needs, leading up to self-actualization. I simply share this to emphasize that belonging is a human fundamental need. We want to belong. We want to belong in our organization. We want to belong in the community of supporters. And there's a direct correlation between feelings of belonging and donor retention. Right. So not only do we have belonging in our families of origin and the families and the friends that we've assembled and created, but there is an opportunity to create belonging, meeting that fundamental need through our giving communities. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. First T of Greater Akron needed to switch from an outdated donor management system to something more user-friendly. With Bloomerang, they found that and more. Here's Executive Director Josh Smith sharing what he likes about Bloomerang. We love Bloomerang because it's so, like, it's very user-friendly. We're able to do more because our daily tasks of thanking donors and sending thank you notes have been cut more than half because of Bloomerang. Year over year, we have raised more funds. So obviously, I think Bloomerang's been a a huge part of that. By investing in a donor management system that they actually love using, First Tee of Greater Akron was able to raise more funds and continue creating lasting change in their community. To listen to the full interview with First Tee of Greater Akron, visit bloomerang.com forward slash intentional or click the link in the show notes. And I think there's a huge opportunity for us to maximize that and a huge and urgent call for us to do that. So I want to break down the four psychological elements of belonging. The first one is you feel a sense of belonging when you are seen. So applied to fundraising, when you are seen for your generosity, when you're recognized and respected by others, 
I think about Dr. Jen Sheng's nine moral adjectives, kind, caring, compassionate. Like when you're seen for those identity markers, those identity words that you aspire to be. And then, as I said, respected by others. Now, note, recognition is not one size fits all. Some like blasting that recognition, tell everyone, and others are far more modest, especially those that give for reasons of faith, right? They feel like they are called to give. Much more modest, recognition should be far more discreet. So first, psychological element, when you are seen. Second, psychological element, when you are connected. Relative to giving communities, when you're connected, you have a positive, authentic social interactions with staff, with senior leadership, board members, maybe peer supporters or next level supporters, and certainly program participants as appropriate. So you feel connected to the work, to the people doing the work, both at the leadership level and the volunteer ranks, and certainly the people who are participating in your programs. You feel a connection. The third psychological element, when you are supported in your engagement. So when you get what you need to achieve your giving goals and feeling like you live a full life, you're giving back, right? So when you feel supported, so when you've taken on something, you get what you need to execute. So let's just say that as a part of your recurring giving program, you've mobilized some of those members to do a backpack drive or stuffed backpacks for back to school, or you're doing a canned food drive for kids who are going to go on summer break, or you're volunteering at summer day camp with children at the grief and loss camp with children who have recently lost a loved one, but you're getting the tools. You feel equipped. You know what to do. You've been trained. You have the tools to execute. You feel supported, right? And maybe it's even in your giving. You might call and leave a voicemail for someone in the development department to say, can you give me an update on what I've given so far this year? And you want to return call. You want to feel supported. And then the fourth element of belonging is when you are proud or when you feel satisfied. So applying that to giving, you feel proud and satisfied with your giving and the work of the nonprofit organization you're supporting. You feel aligned with its purpose, its vision, its values. You feel that satisfaction of knowing you're making a difference. So here's my aha moment from all the reading and reflecting on all this research about current giving behaviors, the science of connection and belonging. When I was a fundraising practitioner, so frontline fundraiser, and let me remind you, I started my training and consulting business 15 years ago as a side hustle, as they call it. I've only been full-time in the business for a little over two years. In other words, I have walked in your fundraising shoes through decades of economic ups and downs and through the height of the recent pandemic. I get it. And my aha is that in my fundraising role, I focused on building and strengthening donor relationships with me, me as a conduit or a representative to my nonprofit organization. And I encouraged my staff to do the same with their respective portfolios or giving programs. And that's a good thing. Fundraising is built on trusting relationships. And we are the outward facing representatives for our organization. But there are a couple of challenges to this approach when it comes to recurring giving communities and creating sustainable communities where people feel that sense of belonging and purpose. So the first opportunity or challenge is that at some point, there's a lot more of them than there is of us. And that's a good thing. We want hundreds and thousands of members in our recurring giving communities, right? I mean, Charity Water's monthly giving community, The Spring, has over 70,000 members from 147 countries, including me. It's impossible for one staff member to have a meaningful personal relationship with every member of our recurring giving communities, especially as they grow over time. Yes, automation helps a whole bunch, but what more can we do to create meaningful connections across the digital divide? So that's challenge number one. Challenge number two, we do see that there is a high rate of turnover in the fundraising profession. 
So if my primary relationship is with a staff member in a revolving door position, every time that staff member leaves our organization and someone else is introduced, it disrupts the connection and erodes trust just a bit. And heaven help us if we don't fill that position right away, which is not an easy thing to do these days. I see those as the two biggest challenges to this model where staff develops relationships or attempts to with reoccurring giving community members. But the new and exciting opportunity from my viewpoint is to create meaningful connections with and within your recurring giving community. Yes, you as a fundraising professional want those meaningful connections and relationships with your supporters. And to the degree that you can nurture meaningful connections and relationships amongst giving community members, the higher your retention and gift value rates will be, right? Because when community members feel connection within the group, with their peers, the four elements of belonging will be fulfilled for them, right? So it's one thing to have a connection with a staff member, but when I am connected with multiple others who are also a member of this recurring giving community, I feel much deeper connection. And staff turnover has a much lower impact, right? We are in this together. This recurring giving community becomes part of my social community, my volunteer community, fulfilling that part of my basic emotional need to belong. My Maslow hierarchy of needs are being met. So staff turnover will be less disruptive. Meaningful social connections will be made and strengthened over time via online and offline engagement, whether it be hands-on volunteerism or maybe advocacy opportunities or on or offline town hall report outs and discussions about the work at hand. Those are the opportunities to not just build relationships between individual donors and staff, but amongst the donor pool themselves. And here's the best part. When connections and trust are strong, many community members will become those coveted ambassadors within their own circles of influence, inviting others to come learn about our organization and join them in giving to this community that means so much to them personally. And that, my friends, will certainly produce a much higher return on investment than any acquisition list we could ever purchase. Of course, we still need to do the work to brand and package our recurring giving communities, whether it's copywriting and creating a marketing plan, website design and social media planning, maybe producing a launch video for your recurring giving program or a growth video, transforming your recurring giving experience from the perspective of a community member, right? Maybe reimagine what you have through the eyes of a supporter versus how it was likely created originally, which was through the eyes of your organization. And of course, create an engagement calendar for giving community members and all of the opportunities that you can provide them over the course of the coming year. So here's what I know. Good fundraising and sustainability are deeply rooted in community. You know, Brene Brown says, quote, True belonging doesn't require us to change who we are. It requires us to be who we are, end quote. Creating a recurring giving community that allows members to express who they really are in community with others who share their values and their passion, that's what's going to help us get to sustainability. That's what's going to grow our individual giving program, increase donor retention, increase donor lifetime value, grow our major gift program and our legacy gift programs over time. This is what we must embrace if we are to truly grow fundraising, to create meaningful communities that add value to the members of the community and to the community at large. And now for a final word from our sponsor. Thank you to our friends at Bloomerang for supporting this episode. If you'd like to learn more about how Bloomerang can help your nonprofit acquire, retain, and engage donors, or learn how First Tea of Greater Akron doubled their unique donors, improved donor stewardship, and raised more funds in the first year with Bloomerang, head over to bloomerang.com forward slash intentional or click the link in the show notes. That's what we need to do. 
The Intentional Fundraiser Podcast is a fundraising transformed original. It's hosted by me, Tammy Zonker, founder and president of Fundraising Transformed, where we help equip and empower fundraisers, nonprofit leaders, and board members to transform their fundraising so they can transform the world. Visit fundraisingtransform.com slash podcast to subscribe to this podcast and subscribe to my newsletter to get fundraising lessons, tools, and helpful resources delivered straight to your inbox each month. If you want my help with taking your fundraising to the next level, become a member of my Fundraising Transformers community as a growth member and join me live each month where I'll teach you the same strategies I use to lead, train, and coach thousands of nonprofits, social service organizations, healthcare foundations, private schools, colleges, and universities to collectively raise more than a half billion dollars including a single gift of $27.1 million. As a member, you can participate in my Ask Me Anything sessions every month and get answers to your burning questions. Chat with other growth members inside our private and safe online community about what you're working on, struggling with, and share lessons learned. And get instant access to my growing library of on-demand self-paced training classes. New content is added every single month. Learn more about becoming a member at fundraisingtransform.com slash growth. Talk soon.